Having too much estrogen in a woman's body is increasingly becoming more and more of a problem since women are being exposed to so many environmentally toxic forms of estrogen or estrogen mimickers. So how can you, as a women's health practitioner, help your clients to understand how to healthfully detox all of the estrogen that they're being overexposed to? Hi, my name is Jessica Drummond. I'm the founder of the Integrative Pelvic Health Institute, and it is my mission to help women's health practitioners get to the root cause of their patient's symptoms and safely and effectively use integrative tools to help them heal. So today we're talking estrogen. Let's start with estrogen 101. There are three main kinds of estrogen in the body that we have to deal with as practitioners. So estradiol is the one we're all most familiar with. It's the strongest, it's the estrogen that you have when you're in your cycling, menstrual cycling years. But estrone is a similar compound that estrogen and estrone convert back and forth to each other all the time. So estradiol is E2, estrone is E1, and these two convert back and forth all the time. Estrone is the, is the estrogen of menopause. Estradiol is the estrogen when you're cycling. It is produced by ovaries and your adrenals. This menopausal estrogen is produced mostly by fat cells. You still get some estradiol in menopause that's produced by your adrenals, but no longer from your ovaries. So this converts to estradiol to be active in the cells and it's produced by the fat cells. E3 or estriol is a 1,000th the strength of estradiol. So it's a safer form of estrogen when we're talking about cancer because cancer is a, is a situation of overgrowth, right? The cells are growing out of control and estradiol encourages that cellular division and growth. Whereas estriol does so, but really much slower, it's not that effective. So let's talk about the chemistry about how, of these, how these estrogens are broken down by the liver and excreted to help you detox when your body has too much estrogen. All right, so let's jump in and talk about the metabolism of estrogen. And this is the whole chart of how the sex hormones and stress hormones are metabolized. They start with cholesterol and go to pregnenolone, then we break off this side of sex hormones. So let's jump in. Just today we're gonna to talk about this little piece about estrogen metabolism. So estradiol, or E2, is that very active form of estrogen, converts back and forth to estrone. When you're trying to detox, you need to convert to these metabolites in phase one of liver detoxification. There are several active, we know they're biologically active metabolites because some higher levels are predictive of breast cancer. We'll get into all, to all that in a second. But these active metabolites are 2-hydroxyestrone, which is actually more of a protective metabolite. It acts as an antioxidant. So this is our favorite one, 2-hydroxyestrone. 16-alpha-hydroxyestrone is can be dangerous, has some correlations with higher levels of breast cancer risk, but there are also some new research that's showing some protective benefits of 16-alpha-hydroxyestrone too. So this one's a little bit of a double-edged sword, and that's the one that converts to estriol, that really inactive, kind of healthier form of estrogen. And 4-hydroxyestrone is, again, a little bit of a question mark in the research, but it's more active in a negative way than 2-hydroxyestrone. So let's talk about these metabolites of estrogen. Here's 2-hydroxyestrone. Among friends, that's known as the good estrogen. That's the one we want more of, the good estrogen metabolite. 16-alpha-hydroxyestrone, bad, that is related to cancer. And 4 is also bad, not as clear, but not good. So we want a higher ratio of 2 to 16. And because 2 is a great metabolite, it's actually an antioxidant, even more potent than vitamin E, according to some research that was published in the Biochemical and Biophysical Research Communications Journal a long time ago. This is a great antioxidant, and that's important because in liver phase 1 detox, 
free radicals are produced, which are bad for liver cells, and this can come in and quench those. Now, here's the thing. When you eat more cruciferous vegetables or take supplements that are um, from molecules that are in cruciferous vegetables called indole, so a supplement is called DIM or SGS, which is another supplement that comes from broccoli extract, essentially. So high levels of cruciferous vegetables or supplements that are like cruciferous vegetables, you raise your level of 2-alpha-hydroxyesterone, and that is good news. Now, the key, though, is that new research is showing us that the 16-alpha-hydroxyesterone may not be as predictive for breast cancer as we once thought, and there may be some benefit, actually, of 16-alpha-hydroxyesterone metabolite in the circulation because it can be protective of hypertension in women. So the jury is a little bit still out. New research is not as clear as the older research. Yet, there's no harm in eating more broccoli and encouraging phase two, a phase one liver detox to increase the, the amount of 2-hydroxyesterone. So a higher ratio of 2 to 16 is created when you have cruciferous vegetables or the supplements that are kind of concentrated doses of cruciferous vegetables. Now the even more important thing, now that this research is a little more fuzzy about 16-alpha-hydroxyesterone, is we want to get these metabolites all the way out of the body because they're all met metabolically active. And there are two things that we're concerned about with phase two and of liver detox and getting all of this stuff all the way out. So in phase two, some people have a genetic issue where there is a SNP, single nucleotide polymorphism, of this gene, MTHFR, which makes it challenging for them to convert if they take like a B vitamin supplement or eat something with B vitamins into the active form of B that helps with phase two of liver detox. So, and that's about 60% of Americans, actually fewer French people, which is kind of interesting to me because it's a little total tangent, but maybe that's why it's easier for French people to detox all that wine, who knows. So, <laughs> going on, MTHFR SNP, you need to then add active B vitamins if your clients are not completely detoxing estrogen. Maybe they get through phase one, the metabolites are looking pretty good, but then they're not getting them all the way out. And the other two key things for getting stuff all the way out, don't forget, you gotta go through the colon and the kidneys. So we need lots of fiber and we need lots of water. And phase two requires other nutrients that we can get into in another video. Again, liver detox can get complicated. But when you've got a woman who's suffering with period pain or maybe endometriosis, think too much estrogen and we have to get that estrogen detoxed completely through the liver detox and system and the colon and the kidneys. And we want to take a look at, and we'll save this for another video as well, but we want to take a look at what are the sources of estrogen that she's getting into her body. Why is she taking in too much estrogen? Is she using shampoos with chemicals that mimic estrogen or being exposed some other way in the environment? Because that's really important. Not only do we want to get the estrogen out, but we want to be careful that we don't put too much in, especially those environmentally toxic estrogens. So the bottom line is, if you have patients coming to you with symptoms of too much estrogen, painful periods, perhaps endometriosis, breast tenderness, water retention, even sometimes belly fat is an issue with too much estrogen, you want to be sure you're thinking through all the phases of liver detoxification to get rid of the estrogen and you want to go back and think about why is she getting too much estrogen in to her body. And we'll talk more about that in the next video.
So in the comments below, the number one thing I would love for you to answer for me today is do you have a lot of patients and clients that are showing up with symptoms of too much estrogen? And what after this video is going to be your number one recommendation to the next patient who walks in your door with too much estrogen? Again, my name is Jessica Drummond. I'm the founder of the Integrative Pelvic Health Institute. You can find us at integrativepelvichealthinstitute.com. Thanks for spending your time with me today, and we'll see you next time. Bye. If you like this video, please like it and share it with your friends. And before you go, go to my website, integrativepelvichealthinstitute.com. Fill in your name and email at the boxes on the top right hand side of the homepage and click submit. And before you go, I would love it if you would leave me a comment below this video. I love hearing from you.